Today is going to be a head-to-head -head battle between property giants SMDC versus Mega World. Between the two, which one will provide you a better Airbnb property? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. Today, we have another video about being an Airbnb host. Now, if you are brand new to this channel, I've done a series of videos about how to be an Airbnb host, giving you tips on how to manage your property. And my first Airbnb video dating back to two years ago was actually about which condo developer is more likely to allow you to Airbnb your property. This time, we are zoning in on two of the more popular developers out there. I've put together here a criteria of five different factors that will really influence the way you run your property as an Airbnb. What we'll cover today will really take you through the entire Airbnb process from check-in to check-out. And hopefully, this will help guide you if, in fact, you'd want to Airbnb your place. Are you ready for this battle of SMDC versus Mega World? Stick around and let's find out. Fight! So before anything, I wanted to give a disclaimer that I actually won't buy a place for the specific purpose of airbnb -ing it. I mean, I've gone through these details in past videos. I've shared with you about the upcoming Airbnb bus. Again, I'm telling you that if you want to buy a property, your first and primary purpose should not be to Airbnb it because with all the uncertainty that surrounds the Airbnb business and short-term hosting, I wouldn't want you to get stuck with paying for a property for the next 10, 15, even 20 years. So please invest wisely and have this just as a supporting tool for you to consider between SMDC and Megaworld, again, for the purpose of a property investment, not for the sole purpose of running it as an Airbnb. So I've put together here five different criteria. The first one will be a continuation from what we talked about before. Criteria number one would be on allowability. Now I've discussed before that different condo developers actually have a different tolerance when it comes to Airbnb. There are those that very much do not like it and completely disallow it. There are those in the middle who are kind of tolerating it. While at the end of that spectrum, there are those who are very much accommodating and allowing it firsthand. So since SMDC and Megaworld have the most number of properties around the Philippines, which one of them allow Airbnb? If you've watched my previous videos, this might not be a surprise to you. With this criteria of allowability, this round will actually go to SMDC. Now, based on my experience for many years now, I've been lucky enough to manage a handful of properties for both Megaworld and SMDC. A lot of them are actually properties owned by you guys, my viewers, and I'm thankful that you are continuing your trust. So why do I say that SMDC comes out on top here? Well, it's automatic now that when one of you inquire about doing a partnership with me, I've seen that SMDC is very consistent with their policy on allowing Airbnb. So I know we've gone through the pandemic about some condos really not allowing Airbnb. But even with all that, I've seen that SMDC has really been able to maintain their policy on allowing Airbnb. On the other hand, while Megaworld actually allows Airbnb in many of their developments, I've also witnessed that they are not so open to it in certain developments. Now specifically, I had one of you guys, my viewers, inquire with me about having their place in Makati run as an Airbnb. So when I had the property owner inquire with the admin, it was stated that the building policy about Airbnb is to require at least 30 days for you to be able to run Airbnb at that mega world property. So that was unfortunately a big letdown. I mean, that's practically a medium term lease. It's no longer a short term guest. There was also one instance when I was in a property of mega world in BGC. And when I asked the reception about their stand on allowing Airbnb at their property, the reception actually told me that it was going to be phased out in the following year. So while I have and am currently managing a handful of properties that are under Megaworld, I unfortunately can't say that they are as open to Airbnb when you compare it to SMDC because of this said inconsistency. Moving on to criteria number two, this would be in terms of the preparation for guests who are checking in. Of course, you'll need the full name of guests, their IDs, their check-in date, and check-out date. While both would have these requirements, of course, for security in the building, I would actually choose Megaworld in this round. I find working with Megaworld a little bit easier. I mean, for SMDC, 
they have a lot of these forms that you need to fill out. There are times when the experience is not very pleasant for guests because security and the front desk would be looking for a counter signature. Sometimes they will question the email if I as the sender have an SPA or a special power of attorney. So in many ways, SMDC tends to get very anal about the process and the requirements. While with Mega World, usually it's just an email, you don't really have to do all the forms that SMDC puts together. In terms of ease and friendliness, I would really choose Mega World over SMDC. I guess another sub factor here would be SMDC actually having a lot more Airbnb in their properties. So there can be a line, a longer filtering process when they are checking in. Again, criteria number two goes to Mega World. Let's move on to number three. For this criteria, this might be a little bit more advanced. Criteria number three is regarding self-check-in. Self-check-in of guests can be generally done in two different ways. The first would be through a lockbox. So this is a manual mechanism where you leave your key and the guest can access it through an agreed code that you provide and change for every guest. And your option number two would be through a digital lock. Also the same principle of having a unique password for their stay. So it's like generating a new ATM code, but this time for your door for every guest. Now unfortunately, SMDC does not allow the presence of these lock boxes. I think it's more of an aesthetic thing. SMDC only really allows digital locks. And despite the presence of many digital locks out there in the market, SMDC has only accredited one specific model and it's a little bit on the pricier side. I think it's priced around 8 to 10,000 pesos. So even though there are cheaper digital locks out there, SMDC really requires you to have this specific digital lock. So on the cost side of things, it can get quite expensive. Meanwhile, in Mega World Properties, they do allow both digital locks and manual lock boxes. You know, manual lock boxes really cost under 1,000 pesos. So in terms of this criteria on self-check-in and what you need to spend, I would again have to award this to Mega World. So let's move on to criteria number four. Criteria number four would be in terms of the amenities that are available in the property. So this one is a little in between. What's good with a lot of Mega World properties is that their developments still have the combo of pool and gym for most. While on the other hand, SMDC, especially for their newer developments, have really done away with having a gym. You might think that I'm awarding this criteria to Mega World again, but actually, I'm awarding this criteria to SMDC. Well, I think in terms of maintenance and presentability, SMDC does a better job in not only maintaining their pools, but their common areas. I've seen a lot of Mega World properties. Let's face it, they're not really maintained as well, especially the slightly older ones. So I think in terms of maintenance, SMDC does a better job, even if a lot of their newer properties don't have the gym and pool combo. And SMDC is able to do this because they are quite clear about how they charge non-tenants for the use of their pool. I mean, it's common knowledge now, if you are an Airbnb host or have been an Airbnb guest, you know that you have to pay extra when you use the pool, uh, 150 pesos on regular days and 300 pesos on holidays. So while that might be an extra cost for the guest, I think it's better in terms of maintenance. That's why for this criteria of common amenities, I'm giving it to SMDC. So let's move on to the last criteria, number five. This one, of course, still has to do with a lot of the guest experience. So while both SMDC and Mega World, of course, have a large set of house rules, most popular here would, of course, be no hanging, drying of clothes on the balconies. There are, of course, many common rules to govern the safety, beauty, and security of a place. So while there are both exhaustive rules for both developments, SMDC is actually quick to spot any violation of its house rules. I've had a guest at an SMDC property who was given a violation notice because he threw out his garbage across the hallway and he wasn't wearing any shirt. I mean, I guess that is understandable. In the same way that SMDC has monetized the use of the pool and some amenities, we would be at the forefront of having to pay these fines. I mean, of course, we can find the guests as well. But with that, there is, of course, this unpleasant experience between the guests and ourselves as well. I've had an experience also in the past wherein SMDC also fined me because the guests actually had their clothes hanging out by the window, imposing fines and having violations on having a second, third offense can actually rack up. There are even higher fines as you become a multiple offender. So in terms of compliance to house rules and maybe the general welfare of guests, I would again, unfortunately for SMDC, 
have to give this to Mega World. In my years of being an Airbnb host at Mega World Properties, I actually have never been given a fine or a violation for one of my guests. I mean, after all this time, in what, six, seven years, I still haven't had the unpleasant experience of having to fine my guests or finding out that I've been fined. So with that, with this head-to-head -head matchup, we have Mega World coming out with a total score of 3 versus SMDC with a total score of 2. These are my own personal criteria. I mean, a lot of these are actually subjective and some of these can be looked at from a different perspective. So this is simply my opinion about which property developer I find better to have my Airbnb. Would you like me to do a more thorough comparison about the actual units, about SMDC versus Mega World? beyond Airbnb, let me know in the comment section. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy Airbnb hosting!